Hi guys, welcome to my latest video. Gonna try another variation on my little swiping technique I've got going on, my pseudo resin swipe. I think I'm just gonna cut it short now and call it a pseudo swipe. Um, Cause I'm gonna be doing so many of them that yeah, I think I can, I can put that name into my mainstream titles. Purely just for you guys to know what you're going to be looking at as you scroll through my channel. Um, Alright, I've got a fair bit of paint left here. Not exactly colours that I have mixed up to go together. Lots of leftover, leftover colours here. Um, thinking something like a pink and blue. I think I'll just go for something like a pink and blue. I haven't done one for a long time in those simple colours. Um, I've got a Thalo Turquoise, a Magenta, um, I've got a Colour Art Vavoom Red and a Colour Art Sapphire on Ice. So they're the colours I'm going to be using and I'm going to swipe over the top with white this time. I just need one more clean stick. No, I don't need to. All right, so I've been going through a fair bit more paint with this technique um, than just the simple blooms. The reason being is trying to get that color all the way over the surface. And I think what I'm trying to test myself to do at the moment is see how big I can get this lacing by swiping across my my colors before I actually tilt them. Um, and in saying that though, I want to get my colored section, normally with a, with a swipe I would do the lines um, and then swipe. So this time I'm going to create a big colorful surface about this big and I'm going to swipe over the top of that and then we're going to tilt it. So it is a little bit different, it does take a little bit of practice. Um, this is probably my uh, seventh or eighth go at this. So I'm starting each time I learn something more and I'm starting to get the hang of what's working best for it. Radio, that is not sapphire and ice, what is that? That's rich cobalt. Getting to know the names now just by looking at them. Uh, I've got a phthalo blue there as well and a teal. So I might go for a bit of a crazy pink and blue Plink and blue, plink and blue, pour. It's early, forgive me. Right, so I probably want to finish, might want to finish with um, the turquoise and the pink. I'm just trying to think to myself about. Okay, so it's not that important where you put your color for this one, but see, we are using a lot more than usual. It's a really good, probably a really good way to, if you've mixed up way too much paint at one point in your week, um, this is a really, really cool way to use it up without stressing out too much about wasting it. So it's, it is going to do the job when it comes to giving you a much more colourful background and less chance of that paint underneath pushing up and coming through which we don't really want that um, it's it's a cheap and easy way to get cells blowing on pillow paint but um, we don't want those cells that have no color in them do we well I don't I'll let you speak for yourself so I don't know why I'm going for a square pattern here when I've got a circle I'm thinking about that. Okay, magenta. This is this magenta has been stretching out really well with this technique. Um, it stretches out and it remains extremely bright. Right. <clears throat> Got our rich cobalt. We'll put there.
should make the cells nice and shimmery in the end. And last but not least, the phthalo turquoise. This is a golden. I'm not sure if the golden make um, in the fluid acrylics, make the phthalo turquoise in the fluid acrylics, or whether or not my art store just doesn't have it. So I'd use the heavy body, which took a little bit of adjusting, but I've been able to make that work. Okay, so just got my usual white here. I'm going to pour a little stripe of white onto some cardboard. And then I've just got some old business cards um, here that I'm going to use. So what I'm gonna do first is uh, just blend this all. I might just blend that color together a little bit. We just don't want all those stripies In our background, I think it would be nicer to have it just more blended. Bring a bit of that lighter color over there, like that. Okay, so I've got a pretty good foundation there to, to do our swipe on. Those colors will become beautifully blended and probably get a lot of nice purples in there as well from our pink and blue mixing. Okay, so the all important swipe. I'm gonna go for something about that thick, that wide, sorry. And then I'll have a little skinnier one as well. So I might do one through the middle and just one each side because I'm still working this out. I don't wanna veer off into some crazy ninja swiping pattern when I'm still trying to learn how to make this work the best. So we want to keep it thin enough to just slide over the top of our surface there. We only want to slide it over the colours. Um, I said I wasn't going to do that but anyway I just did it. Yeah, we want to swipe over the top of the colours. We don't want to push that swipe through to the pillow um, because we don't want to bring any of that pillow paint up. Um, through there. I need something really skinny. I'm not sure what we're going to get here. My white looks like it's a little bit thin. I wonder if we should push some black through there. I'm going to go one more. All right, let's see if this is gonna hold up. Okay, my white was a little bit too thin by the look of that. Let's see if we can get something anyway. Mm. Not really liking my extra thin lacing there. So it's stretching out, but it's not really staying as bright as I would hope. See, it gets brighter as you stretch the colours out, though. So that all looked quite dark there for a moment. Our pattern's worked out quite well. Got a bit of a wave going there. So it's not great. I'm not sure what's happened there. I think probably I've just picked two darker colours to start with. I should have left out that purpley rosy colour. And we could probably get that to go across there and stretch that right back out, try to get some of that nice aqua. 
I'll definitely make my white thicker next time. So yeah, we didn't really get the actual cells. We just got the lacing. We don't want just lacing. I want to find, I want to see some, some cells with color in them, more like the up the top here, rather than that wishy-washy down the bottom. That wishy-washy is because I've pushed that through there and it's, the white's just become too thin. But you can definitely see that beautiful wave pattern and that pink and aqua as it's being stretched out is much nicer than what's happening over this side I think we'll just get rid of that dark plum color whilst trying to keep our wave So yeah, we definitely got a really cool pattern there. I think I will go for something a little bit of a different color. Yes, I think I'll be watching that back to work out where I did that swiping because that's worked out actually really, really good as far as um, having a bit of variety with the composition. She's a beauty in that way, but this lacing could have been a lot thicker through here and this could have been a really spectacular painting had I checked my consistency a bit better first. But anyway, we'll have another go. If I've got anything left to paint on. I'm just looking around for something, anything flat because yeah, I've run out of boards. I've just been painting so much. Like I get so excited when I find something different that I can wake up in the morning and try something new every day. I don't want to keep doing the same thing over and over. Um, and especially when I uh, have, I've got something new and it's working, but I'm not quite, I don't quite have it where it needs to be yet. That is the most exciting time of my life. I absolutely love it. Um, because it means I can get up and experiment and just keep working towards, um, yeah, just pushing it further and in a different direction again, keeping everybody sort of, you know, interested. And um, it took me a long time to get bored of blooms. I'm still not bored of blooms now, but I just, I just don't want to be doing them every single day. I want to be um, trying different things. And so since doing the course, my, my course students have no idea what they've done for me in the sense that I was getting bored. Um, and that's part of the reason why I shared it because I just wanted to see where it could be taken by other people. Um, I'd sort of come to a point where <clears throat> I couldn't think of where else it could go. Um, and yeah, my core students discovered um, the, black, the black and coloured lacing, which I didn't really um, have down pat when I released the course. Um, the swiping, you know, I got challenged to a swipe and then all of a sudden got addicted to swiping because um, it just never, my mind didn't open up enough to try these different things. So now it's amazing. I've got, I've got all these people that are like a family and at the same time they're bringing new ideas to me and we're all working together to um, push this, yeah, this acrylic pouring we just want to push it to the next level and see exactly where it can go so if you're watching and you are one of my course students thank you so much um, I got something out of this course I did not expect and that was that you guys um, have taught me probably more than I've taught you so yeah very grateful for that and really exciting to see everybody getting cells and being happy with their paintings and really just thinking outside the square now about where it's going to go next. So thanks for listening to all that rambling and watching another one of my videos that didn't come out exactly how I planned it, but we did learn something from this. Well, I definitely did learn something from this. Uh, make sure your top mix is definitely thick enough to hold those cells once it's been stretched and think about your colors carefully. 
and um, work on that pattern and what that pattern might mean once it is stretched out. It might not look anything like when you originally swiped it on there. Um, so there's definitely a lot of room for playing around there, which I'm gonna go do now. Okay, bye.